time, Freddie. Margie's out. But, Mr. Albright. Goodbye. <laughs> Haven't you got a home? I told you that Margie was out. I know, but she phoned me to come over and wait for her here. Oh, well, okay, but you'll have to be quiet. Mr. Honeywell and I are trying to work. Oh, don't worry. I'll make like a mouse. You won't even know I'm here. <laughs> oh, I found the trouble, all right. Somebody added these figures wrong. Let me see. Good evening, Mr. Honeywell. Working on a big deal, huh? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. Uh, don't worry, I, I won't make another sound. <laughs> this column here, that's where you goofed. I'll show you. 9, 16, 21, 20, 32, 41, 49, 56, 62, 67, 74, Do you have to make all that racket? Sorry. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, this column here. 9, 16, 21, 20, 32, 41, 49. <laughs> That's you! <laughs> Freddy, for Pete's sake. I'm sorry, Mr. Albright. I, I couldn't help it. I've got a little cold. What are you trying to do? Give it to us? It's just somewhere else. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Honeywell. I'll pick everything up. Well, hurry up and then get out of here. Wait in the den, wait in the kitchen, wait any place but here. Yes, sir. Accident, Mr. Honeywell. I'll pay it back. Oh, you'd better, and clean up that mess. Yes, sir. Quiet! I'm sorry. What your daughter could possibly see in that neuter brain is beyond me. Oh, you're so right. Well, let's try it again. You'll check it this time. Madhouse, let's go to the office. A fine thing, letting an unemployed idiot drive a man out of his own home. <laughs> I'll help you, Mr. Honeywell. Not that, not that. your pen, Mr. Honeywell. I'll pay you back. You what? You haven't got a dime, otherwise I'd sue you. <laughs> Some days it just doesn't pay to get out of bed. Oh, hi, Dad. Mr. Honeywell. Well, what's the matter? What's that boyfriend of yours with a pointed head. Margie, I mean it. One of these days... <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Honeywell, but it seems that every time I listen to you about Margie, I end up behind the eight ball. Do you want to hear my idea or not? Let's face it, she's too smart. She's always ten laps ahead of us. 
Too smart for you, maybe, but not for me. You do as I say, and I'll bet you a fast 50 that Margie will give Freddy the air herself. Make it 100. That's a bet. Now, my idea is to make Margie not want him around. How? Make her dislike him. How? Get her sore at him. How? 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 <laughs> Where are you, an Indian? Get to the point, Mr. Honeywell. All right, here it is. The one thing Margie can't stand is being told what to do. You know, being ordered about. I'll buy that, so what? Now, suppose Freddy started ordering her about. Being masterful, playing the caveman. Freddy? Are you kidding? Boy, she'd massacre him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Freddy, the caveman. But Margie, if you don't love me, at least say you like me. Okay, I like you. Good night, Freddy. How much do you like me? Freddy, you better go. After what happened, I think it'll be better if you're not here when Dad gets home. Yeah. But Margie, how much do you like me? A little bit, medium-sized, or a whole lot? Oh, stop talking like a six-year-old. You're a big boy now. Yeah, that's right. So how's about a good night kiss? No, thanks. Oh, please. Oh, Margie. When you kissed me, didn't the blood just rush through your veins? <laughs> Mr. Honeywell, I've got to hand it to you. This time you really came up with something. Brains, all right, brains. Just don't forget you're gonna owe me that hundred bucks. Oh, that's one bet I'll be happy to pay. And remember, go home early tomorrow afternoon, get rid of Margie and invite Freddy over. And tell him that the only way to win Margie is to really be aggressive and... Oh, boy, <laughs> this is going to be murder. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to see me, Mr. Albright? Come in, Freddy, my boy. <laughs> if it's about last night here, it's a dollar for Mr. Honeywell's pen. I think I can manage a dollar a week till it's paid for. Oh, nonsense, lad. That was an accident. Put it back in your pocket. Come on in and sit down and make yourself comfortable. <laughs> but, 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 what did you want to see me about, Mr. Albright? Freddy, lad, it's about time that you and I had a nice, long man-to-man -man talk. Man to man? Well, I sent Margie on an errand so that we could talk this thing over alone. Well, 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 what thing? I haven't done anything honest. Oh, relax, Freddy, relax. But, but the, the, the thing, the, the thing you wanted to talk to me about, what is it, Mr. Albright? <laughs> Call me Vern. After all, we are old friends. Oh, you're sick, Mr. Albright. <laughs> I'll call the doctor. Listen to me, son. I'm only trying to help you. Help me? About what? About you and Margie. The way you're losing the battle of love. Battle? Love is a battle? It's always been a battle, son. Ever since the first caveman dragged his mate off by the hair on her head. <laughs> He'd have a pretty tough time with these new short haircuts. I'm serious, son. I'm trying to tell you how to win Margie. Yeah? Wait a second, Mr. Albright. You hate me. Why would you be telling me how to win her? I like you, son. Always have. By the day I first met you, I said to myself, there is a real man. Yeah? Oh, but you let me down. Love blinded you. Instead of a man, you became a measly little mouse. Mouse? The way you let Margie walk all over you. What girl can get romantic with a human doormat? Yeah. Hey, maybe I could change back again, huh? Sure you can, son. You have the will, and I'll show you the way. Gee, you are a pal, Mr. Albright. Uh, Vern, what do I do first? Now, listen closely. You must dominate your chosen mate. Dominate? Yes. Man must always be the master. Master? Woman is just a chattel. Chattel? A possession like a cow, a sheep, or a slave. Chattel. No kidding. You can win any woman if you'll just be the boss. Assert yourself. Remember the caveman, how he won his mate. Be that kind of a man and she'll swoon in your arms. How about that? Now remember, not a word to Margie about our little talk. I got your suit from the cleaners, Dad. Oh, hi, Freddy. I won't be here for dinner, baby. Mr. Honeywell and I are working at the office again tonight. I uh, won't be home until very late. Okay, Dad. Don't work too hard. I'll put this in your bedroom. 
Go to it now, boy, and good luck. Gee, thanks, Mr. O Vern. Thanks for everything. <laughs> You can do it, Freddy boy. Just remember, you're the master. She's a chattel. You're the boss. You and Dad must have made up. He was actually pleasant to you. <laughs> Like an advertisement for Muscle Beach. Come here, mate. Huh? I said, come here, mate. Freddie, what's the matter with you? The mouse is dead, Margie Albright. I'm a man again. I'm your master. You're my chattel. Er, uh, chattel. What do you think of that? I think you flipped your lid. No, mate. This is the real me. The blood of cavemen in my veins. Don't fight the inevitable girl. Ever since time began, man has dominated woman. From now on, you're taking orders from me. Now, go get me my dinner. Are you serious? Certainly I'm serious. Get in there. Now, you listen to me, Lord and Master. No, 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 no. No, wait a minute, mate. You couldn't dominate me with a 15-inch gun off the battleship Missouri. He said, I, I mean, this isn't how it was supposed to work at all. How what was supposed to work? Oh, I can't tell you, Margie. I, I promised. All right, all right, I'll talk. Some caveman. Go ahead, talk. It wasn't my idea, Margie, honest. He, I mean, somebody told me that the only way to win a girl was to be dominating. Somebody by the name of Albright, huh? I didn't say so, Margie. I promised not to tell. Okay, you didn't tell me. So that's why he came home early this afternoon. But why? He must have known I'd get mad. Aha! Uh -huh. Pretty cute. You mean you're not mad at me, Margie? Oh, you keep on being the boss. I'll be your cow. No, Freddy. Dad was right. Huh? I was just so startled for a minute, I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, I like you this way, Freddy. So strong and virile. It, it's thrilling. It is? Freddy, I suddenly see a brand new you. And I love it. Oh, Dad was absolutely right. I'll hurry and get your dinner. You just sit down right there and be comfortable. Master. <laughs> he really went for it, huh? I can't help feeling sorry for the poor dope. He'll be lucky if he gets out all in one piece. I'll bet Margie was fit to be tied. <laughs> Jay, I'll take that hundred now. Oh, it's a pleasure. The best bet I've ever lost. Freddy, what are you doing here? Mr. Albright, I had to see you. Oh, what's the matter, boy? Mr. Albright, what I feel about you, well, I just can't put it into words. Well, now, Freddy, you mustn't blame Albright if something's gone wrong with you. Wrong? Oh, no, sir, everything's fine. What? Mr. Albright, you're wonderful. What? Honest, Mr. Honeywell, I took his advice about Margie, and do you know what happened? Oh, what? We're engaged to be married. <laughs> Thanks to you, Mr. Albright. I'm so happy I could dance. <laughs> your brains. Hi, Vern. If you're not doing anything tonight, I'll treat you to a movie. Vern, what's wrong? Your face looks like you slept in it. Oh, the most terrible thing has happened, Roberta. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad. Oh, it's even worse. Margie's gonna marry Freddie. Oh, well, he's a nice boy. Marry him? No. 
What have you been up to, Vern? This sounds like one of Margie's little acts to teach you a lesson. Oh, this is no act. You wait to see them together, the way she... Here they come now. <laughs> Let me help you, my dearest dear. Thank you, my kissing sweet. I got aching back. I uh, guess you've heard the happy news. Isn't it about time to start dinner, Margie? Dinner? Who needs food when you're madly in love? Oh, darling, I just can't wait till we're married. Yeah. It's going to be so wonderful. Yeah. Just think, living the rest of our lives together. Yeah. <laughs> Just the three of us. And when the time comes, we can turn Dad's room into a nursery. He can sleep on the couch. <laughs> Come along, Vern. I'll make you a sandwich. What's the matter? Don't you want me to kiss you? I'm a very changeable woman, Freddie. A woman is like the weather. One minute warm, the next minute cold. Oh. <laughs> Just when did this nauseating thing happen? Oh, last night, and it's all my fault. Don't tell me you tried another of your surefire tricks on Margie. Oh, it was Mr. Honeywell's idea, but... I told Freddie to be masterful with Margie. I thought she'd get sore at him. But instead, she got engaged to him. You poor, pathetic mare. Now look, Vern, I know Margie pretty darn well, and believe me, she has no intention of marrying Freddie. But she... Don't you get it? Somehow she found out what you were up to, and being Margie, she's gonna make you squirm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet you're right. So is a safe bet. Well, who can play this little game? Vern, whatever you're thinking, don't do it. Margie's as stubborn as you are. Don't start anything more. Hmm. So she's trying to make me squirm, is she? Well, we'll see who the squirmer is in this family. <laughs> Margie, I've got a wonderful idea. Yes, Dad? Well, seeing you and Freddie like this tonight, well, I... I made up my mind. I want you to get married right away. <laughs> of course. You are anxious to get married, aren't you? You don't want a long, a long engagement, do you? Well, no. No, of course not. Just about, uh, oh, two or three years. <laughs> what a girl. Always joking. I'll tell you what. I'll get Judge Patterson to arrange for a special license and come over and marry you two tomorrow night. <laughs> It's three o'clock in the morning. How come you're not asleep? Uh, how come you're not asleep? Well, I... Uh, something worrying you? Remember that game we used to play when I was little? When there was something I couldn't tell you, so you'd pretend to be Mom. Remember? I remember. Could we play it now? Of course, honey. Thanks. Now remember, you're Mom. And you can tell Mom anything you want without your father ever hearing one word of it. Oh, Mom, I'm in an awful mess. I may believe I wanted to marry Freddie just to play a trick on Dad. And now he's arranged for us to get married tomorrow, and I don't want to, but I don't know what to do about it. Oh, I don't think there's anything to worry about, honey. I don't think your father's going to force you to marry Freddie. I know, Mom. But poor Freddie. What am I going to do about him? I can't tell him I was just using him for a stupid gag. You just can't treat people that way. No, that's right, honey, you can. And it's pretty wonderful of you to remember about Freddie's feelings. I'll bet your father forgot all about that part of the problem entirely. 
But what am I going to do? I've just got to let Freddie down easy. Mm. I'll think of something. You will? I promise. Oh, thanks. You're such a wonderful mom. <laughs> Good night. Good night, baby. And so we've got to think of some way of letting Freddy down easy. After all, he is human. Well, if you want to be technical about it. Think of something. You claim to be the brain around here. Come on, think. show old Honeywell who's got the brains. <laughs> I tried to call him and gloat a little, but he left the office. Well, what did you arrange? Well, uh, the perfect payoff. Now, wait till Freddy. Hiya, Pop. What's going on here, secrets? You can't have secrets from me anymore. Remember, Vern, from now on, she's my little Margie. <laughs> What do you say we rehearse a little while we're waiting for the judge? Now, we'll have the ceremony right here in the middle of the room. I'll stand right here. And Margie, when you come in on your father's arm, you stand right beside me. Oh, Margie, isn't it wonderful? In just a few minutes, we'll be man and wife. Freddy! Darling, how could you leave me? Hey, cut out! Sweetheart, how could you and us only married for two days? Married? Are you crazy? Freddy, come home. Please come home to me. You bigamist, I ought to watch with you. But Mr. Albright! Oh, Freddy, why didn't you tell me? Honest, Margie, I've never seen her before in my life. He must be sick out of his mind. Come home, Freddy, I'll forgive you. Now remember, no matter what Freddy says, you're his wife. Well, naturally. Darling, please. Please, sweetheart. Freddy, lover boy. How dare you embrace my husband? He's my husband. He is not, he's mine. Oh, Freddy, not another wife. Not two of them. Not on our wedding night. Margie, cross my heart, they're a couple of lunatics. Freddy? This is goodbye. Oh, Dad, take me away. Far, far away. <laughs> Deceive me, will you? Marry someone behind my back. Well, you can have me. Who's your husband first? You take him. Ladies, please. Bluebeard, <laughs> you marry him. Copy, Cat. letting somebody down easy? Well, it worked, didn't it? Yes. By the time poor Freddy unraveled his mythical marriages, he was so leery of the whole idea of matrimony, he jilted me. Yes, sir. That's my little Margie. Margie. <laughs> 